You guys see all kinds of content out there on the internet. Which LED bulb is best? And let me give you a clue here. It's not the brand, it's not the price, and it's certainly not the hype that makes an LED bulb better than another one. But it is a few other things. It's really a combination of technological advancements in materials, thoughtful engineering, which requires an understanding, and the ability to design and physically produce a product that combines the above. All right, so before we dig into that, I'm sure that you guys have seen the wide variety of LED bulbs out there. These things have been out there in the aftermarket for the last good part of the decade. And there's all kinds of different designs, different LED chips. You know, you've got your ones with three huge LED chips on all different sides. You've got ones with two typical LED chips. And of course, you've got these ones with the, you know, the little XHP 50 Cree LED chips that are a thousand watts. But what's the one thing that all these bulbs with these fancy, eye-catching designs for LED chips have in common. Well, the light output sucks, and there's a reason for that, and that's what I'm gonna try to explain to you guys today. Well, let me introduce you guys to a concept called the tolerance box. But before we get into a tolerance box, let's talk about a halogen bulb, of course, with a tungsten filament in the middle. Now, only 50% of the surface area in that tungsten filament in that bulb is actually responsible for producing about 85% of the luminous flux that that bulb actually casts into your headlight. In terms of size, the filament has a specific height, width, and depth, and the optics for your headlight or fog light are calibrated to produce the optimal light output based on this with more precision than you'd probably imagine. Now, once marketers got a hold of this and started to grasp a basic understanding of what it is that I'm talking about here, you started to see all kinds of content and marketing online about super thin PCBs between the LEDs and how thin the LED bulb is. Well, that's good and all, but there's more to this story, guys. What about the combined thickness of the center PCB and the LED chips themselves? What about the height of the light emitting area on the LEDs? What about the length of the LEDs? Thanks to this fun little infographic put out by Morimoto during the release of the Two Stroke 3.0, these variables stack up to less than just a millimeter or two, and although that might not seem like too much, trust me, it is. So you might be asking yourself, can you make up for a lack of precision with just more power? Well, no. I mean, here the saying, power is nothing without control, could not be more true. And that is definitely the case because it doesn't matter if you have a million watts of power, if the, if the power and the density of that LED's output is not right within that tolerance box, the right width, the right height, the right thickness, then you're not gonna be putting that light exactly in the headlight where you need it and therefore, regardless of power, regardless of fancy branding, naming, marketing, whatever you want to call it, the light output on the road will suffer. All right, so all of that mumbo jumbo being said, what does it really come down to when you're shopping for an LED bulb, okay? So some of you guys may have actually watched the review that I did on Morimoto's Two Stroke 3.0 when they came out in late 2020. And I'm pretty sure that one of the key things that I mentioned in that video was that these bulbs are not actually the brightest bulbs out there in terms of luminosity, and that is actually true. But the one thing that they do have, and there may other be other bulbs out there that share, you know, share some overlap with this, is dead nuts on precision in terms of the LEDs, height, width, and depth, the thickness of the PCB, and the position of all of that relative to the base in terms of the distance, the height, and all of those settings. The position of the LEDs and all of that is critical in terms of producing good light output for you to see where you're driving on the road at night, okay? And so that may not be all of it. Of course, there's power, there's things like that. But as I mentioned, power is nothing without control. That's not the be all end all. And for me, and again, in the real world, precision is of utmost importance here. And that's what I'm putting my money on when I'm shopping for an LED bulb.